All right, welcome, Eileen Gardner. Uh, first question, I know the answer is no, but no relation to Sean Gardner, who had the nail no. on his record. That's weird. It's a good, it's a good event for gardeners. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you are, uh, you set the new Everesting record last week, uh, 8.33, right? Which broke uh, Emma Pooley's time of 8.53. So A, quite the, quite the margin of, of, uh, of victory there, and B, uh, Emma Pooley. I'm, I'm a big fan of Emma Pooley, but that's got to be, uh, that's, that's a good one to break. She's a legend. Yeah, I've, I've admired her for quite a while, so I don't yeah. quite have feel you, Have you met worthy. her? Have you talked to you? <laughs> no, I haven't met her. Um, yeah, she had some nice comments, so uh, cool. yeah, thank God. She there. <laughs> She's an awesome but, person. Yeah, she wrote a great article about hers last year as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just really interesting. The, uh, so I want to talk about you a little bit first. You, uh, you're, the, the record was in Wales, but you're not completely from Wales. Explain, you, you bounce around a lot for a 21 year old. Yeah, so I've lived here about four years now and my family's based here now, but I was born in England and then grew up mainly in Northern California um, and then did all my school there and then moved to Wales and did university here. Okay, afterwards. where in California? Uh, I was in Palo Alto, so uh, oh, Bay funny. Area, yeah. Okay, and where'd you get into riding? Uh, that was over there, yeah, because yeah, yeah, I started racing, I think, 2016. So I did a lot of the races around there and then, yeah, I carried on over here. But okay. yeah, I miss the riding over there a lot. It's Do you? Amazing. What's different about it? Um, there's not, there's a lot more like mountains or long climbs over in California, I think. Around here, it's just really lumpy. Like, gotcha. <laughs> there's not you much hills, flat, but no climbs. Yeah, no like hour long ones. Okay. And that's that's kind of your your style of riding is the uh, is obviously climbing, but but kind of longer climbs, not punchy stuff. Yeah, I quite like longer ones, longer the better usually. Gotcha. The um, so you've been in Wales how long? Uh, four and a half years, I think. Okay. So two thousand seventeen. Yeah. Americans don't talk about Wales enough. I went when I was a kid with my family, like a family trip there. Uh, it's beautiful. The uh, yeah. You tell like a little. Just talk about Wales a little bit. Like I think Americans go to Ireland a lot, uh, UK, London, whatever, but not not so much. Wales is a sleeper. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it's got some amazing scenery. I mean, the only downside is the weather, probably. It rains a lot. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of just like rolling scenery and lots of castles. And some okay. good history around here. But I just remember being yeah. super green too. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the rain. <laughs> yep. Yeah, fair enough. Everything fair enough. Yeah, we don't, yeah we, don't, it's lovely. we don't have rain here uh, in Los Angeles. We don't do rain. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the opposite sometimes. <laughs> if uh, if someone went to Wales, where should they where should they visit? Oh, um, I haven't actually been around like North Wales very much. Okay. So I want to go there, but um, right. uh, oh, it's difficult. I mean, I'll just say Cardiff because that's <laughs> that's what I know. But um, yep. I think like along the coast, there's some like Pembrokeshire. There's some really nice like coastal areas around there. Um, All right. It's probably off like walking and stuff. Yeah. Noted. All right. Let's uh. So someone someone go to Wales and uh and hang out with Eileen. The uh. <laughs> and what are you studying in school? Uh. So I did visual effects and motion graphics and finished uh in June. So. Oh, you're done. Yeah, I started a job about a month ago now. Okay. Um, congrats. What's what's the you. what's the job? Uh, it's at BBC <laughs> Wales. <laughs> uh doing okay. yeah working on like a tv show neat the, uh, yeah it's been quite a cool okay. experience yeah it's hard to adjust to at first yeah i was <laughs> like gonna say working, yeah you still find the hours to ride you're on a professional racing team uh so how do you juggle that yeah i'm still kind of figuring out the best way to do it because i work usually 9 30 to 5 30 so i've been trying to kind of like commute in a bit bit of a longer way in uh with a backpack as well which feels awful but it's nice to take it off and it's good <laughs> bit of good resistance training sure. but yeah I'm still sort of figuring out how to get the hours in because I don't have much time to do longer things at the moment okay in the week so far it seems to be working it seems to be agreeing <laughs> with you at this point <laughs> setting yeah. a world record um that was that was your first Everest attempt right yeah I did well I did like a half Everest the month before and that was kind of like I was going to kind of see how it went. So 
like I kind of had a feeling I wouldn't complete the full thing with the gears I had but I was still like oh if it goes well then I'll be able to continue on and finish the full one but there was no chance of that happening um and yeah I've known about everything for like since I first started cycling mm -hmm. really but um this is like my first proper attempt yeah okay well, I'd, I'd say it's more than an attempt if you uh, <laughs> if set the record. The um, so the first one, I guess, what did you learn from the half Everest, and uh, and what did you apply? Yeah, it was actually really helpful in terms of fueling and just like generally how to ride it. Um, the main thing was just the gearing because that is quite a steep hill. Yep. So I got like a forty six on for the uh, actual Everest. Um, and it kind of made me realize how like what a long ride it was going to be because at that point I think a half Everest is like the hilliest ride I'd ever done right. um and I was like oh <laughs> a bit tired after this sure <laughs> Don't know if one, but um yeah it helps like because the fueling went well for that and I felt okay by the end of it so kind of just carried that over to the next one or the okay. full one okay and then what was your uh like what was your support crew like Tell me, uh, yeah, yeah you have helping out. It's a lot. So I didn't, I didn't tell anyone I was doing it because <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna work. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so it was just my dad. Um, and the hill's kind of in the middle of nowhere as well, so like there's no service out there or anything. So if I was gonna like try and get some friends, it'd be quite a big journey for them. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, it was just my dad at, who sat at the top of the hill <laughs> for eight and a half hours. Um, <laughs> you know your dad one. <laughs> yeah, he basically, yeah, we couldn't have done anything without him. Nice. Um, yeah, so it's just him and he was like handing me food and stuff throughout. Okay. Did you have like a, you had like a normal fueling plan or anything, anything special there? Yeah, I usually struggle with like eating and drinking, even just in like three hour races. Right. Um, so I just kind of ate like really small amounts just constantly. So like every lap or every two laps, I'll take like a quarter of a bar and then yeah. just eat that on the way down. And then I think uh -huh. I, I ate about like six bars in total maybe, which, and then a few gels towards the end. But looking back, it like doesn't sound like I ate very much, but at the time I was just constantly like eating, it felt like. You are a small person. So I'm trying to frame that. <laughs> uh like i probably would have to eat twice as much as you for something like that but yeah. i am almost twice your size <laughs> um okay interesting the uh what about so on the hill you're you're eating going down see i had to eat going aren't you going too fast going down is that scary um well i was i'm i was going pretty slowly like relatively speaking on the descent probably compared to you um okay. i'll kind of like grab it on the top and then sometimes i would kind of eat towards the like when I turned around, I would try and eat, but then I was just like not chewing it because I was trying to breathe and then I'd end up having to like spit out. So yeah, it was a bit. Yeah. Actual yeah. solid food is a challenge uh, yeah, an definitely. effort like that. There's no time on uh, races too. But the, uh, so on the, so 17% gradient is insanely steep. I think the last <laughs> one I tried was like 15 and a half. Uh, so you had your special gears, but the downhill basically like you just didn't you just didn't want to open it up every time or how much was it was it technical at all or no it was, it looked um, like it was straight. So like it looks straight but it's like a couple bends in the road <clears throat> okay. um the main thing was just the sheep because they're kind of like hanging around the side of that's that's whales <laughs> <laughs> um like you couldn't really see far enough ahead and then they would always be like like right on the barriers on the side of the road and then there's yeah, fence or there's no fence um in some places like one section there's the steeper section is like a barrier but they can get through it it's just like a one of okay. those metal ones uh yeah a couple of times they ran out in front of me so i was just i i was like on the brakes like a lot of the descent yeah like, you don't want to go that fast if there's although to be fair if you're going to hit an animal a sheep is at least kind of a soft landing right you know they're cushiony Oh, they're a bit rougher than they look, I think. Oh, is that true? <laughs> they're not as soft. Know. Yeah, they look like they'd be I'm nice. I'm just thinking about there. like my comfy wool socks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um. So cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably worse. The, um, what, uh, what other training did you do aside from the half Everest? Like, what did you, did you adapt your training? Because like, normally, well, actually, let me change the question real quick. The uh, road racing, what's your, what's your schedule been like uh, the last year and a half? Probably pretty interesting. Yeah, so it's sort of like last year, there was nothing pretty much. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I didn't really race at all. And then, it, yeah, racing kind of kicked off right when I was thinking of doing the Everest. So 
-hmm. like the few weekends before I was racing most weekends and then you had one yesterday as well um Mm -hmm. so yeah it's sort of like the season just started late and it looks like it will continue until October now so yeah basically in kind of full swing at the moment um so yeah that's mostly in the UK are you going yeah in the past um we've raced abroad a lot and the team has done some but I haven't yet traveled abroad uh, because it's quite tricky with all the COVID tests and yeah I can imagine um but yeah so it's kind of hard to train because most of our races are only about three hours (laughs) doesn't really align with training for an Everest so um but like most of my training is just kind of riding around hills and doing hill repeats and (laughs) probably like the opposite of what any coach would recommend but I uh, enjoy it (laughs) Yeah, no, fair and, enough. Uh, it, yeah. Ultimately, what I what I kind of learned from Everesting is like it's really just a crazy endurance ride. It's not yeah. climbing. It's not like you're just you're just pedaling kind of hard all freaking day. Um, do you have teammates that live nearby that, that you race with, or are you racing kind of on your own? Oh uh, yeah, we're all pretty spread out across the UK. Uh, okay. So yeah, we only really see each other at races. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And you and what about training? Do you train? Do you have training buddies or mostly solo? Um, I used to like a lot of group rides before COVID, but I kind of just never went back to them after. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> restrictions like lasted quite a while in the UK. They're kind of coming and going. Right. Um, it was actually pretty recently that like things relaxed a lot. Mm-hmm. But there's a few, yeah, a few friends I have that I train with, but a lot of it is just kind of alone. Right. Well, that's that's Good. yeah one one side effect of hey I'm doing an Everesting training ride who wants to come with me and no one <laughs> most people yeah. don't raise their hand for there that. There's a few friends that probably who like want to do the, an Everest at some point <laughs> that I probably right. should have told them. <laughs> right. But um couldn't deal with the pressure of that the embarrassment <laughs> if it didn't go well. <laughs> Which I'll um, Oh man the uh okay people see I like to talk about the bike last because people always emphasize the bike part and to me it's like the athlete and the training everything actually let me do the hill first i'm going to change it um how'd you pick that hill and what about it other than the sheep uh which is already pretty hard to top <laughs> um we basically tried to find the steepest hill possible which i think you mentioned before when you were kind of yeah. trying to find the hill just to yeah not waste time on flat roads <laughs> theoretically um, there is a too steep and 17 yeah. might be getting there the problem was there's one section where it kicks up to like over 20 i think it's like 23 or something <laughs> so <laughs> like the first time i rode it which was just on like regular gears and stuff i barely made it up then <laughs> right um, when i had a lot less gears so right. i think that was like a bit much because like it was okay at the beginning but then yeah towards the end i was just like swerving all over the road and doing wheelies up it <laughs> and how many laps um, did you do um so it was 73 I think I had to do like 71 and a little bit and okay. I was yeah after doing the half everything I was a bit <laughs> fed up of that right 70 uh, 73 laps up a 20 percent well, whoever's watching this is is kind of throwing up right now um, <laughs> yeah I was going four miles an hour <laughs> walking pace. that's yeah most people would be walking or not going up or turning around um yeah. no that's that's incredible um okay so now now the bike so you mentioned you got some crazy gearing on there so what's that a back cassette yeah i had a 34 in the front and then a 46 on the back okay Um, that's a dinner uh, plate on the back yeah it's absolutely massive and i just stayed in the little ring the whole time sure uh yeah i didn't want to be messing around with that i took my big ring off when i did it It yeah (laughs) that was something (laughs) not that Um, idea Okay, um, and then apart from that, it's just my just a my training bike. Um, classic training bike. Okay. I think I left my other bottle cage on as well. I just don't know why. Uh, so what you're saying is you could probably excuse. knock five minutes off it. I'm just yeah, I left that on so I could just say this afterwards. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, oh, I could go faster. No, you want to um, give people like if someone thinks they can break the record, you kind of tell them like <laughs> I, I I know where I could find a little more time. Yeah, so, I had my R saver on the back as well. Right. <laughs> and the poolies out there thinking about it <laughs> um the uh okay the last last question uh do you want to do it again uh yeah i kind of <laughs> you do okay, it, i i i feel it feels a bit early to be saying this so like <laughs> it's easy to say that when i'm sitting here but i 
I could easily see myself like trying to do it again and then going like an hour slow or something. <laughs> um, I don't think that I would think happen. like there was, <laughs> there was a bit of a rough patch in the middle, like it, mm. when the weather turned bad and stuff. So I think, yeah, I think sometime I'd like to. Don't know talk when. about talk about the weather and and yeah, what was that patch like? Yeah, so the forecast was like rain all day. Um, so when we but because I'm working and things, it had to be on the weekend, and there's not many free weekends. So I was like, oh, I'll okay. just give it a try. Um, so when we got there, it was actually like just overcast. It wasn't the roads were dry and stuff. And then I think about five hours in, the fog came in. The visibility was like non-existent. And that was when I was also just getting really tired and the sheep incident happened then. Um, and then, so yeah, I was really considering just because, yeah, there's still such a long way to go at that point. Um, yeah. I was quite close to getting off. And then, uh, but then when it brightened up a bit and like more cyclists, because there's, there's not many people around there, which is maybe a good thing. It was bad weather because it's a really narrow road. So if there was like lots of cars and things. Sure out the drives it might have been a bit tricky okay. um but yeah sort of cleared up in the last few hours and uh, that helped a lot because if i had stayed wet i'm not sure i would have you know to <laughs> mentally I'm trying to think about it. like tires on a on a 20 percent gradient and a wet road yeah uh, i had some good grippy ones <laughs> yeah 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 i was worried i'd be like wheel slipping the whole way up right um but i think i like my cadence was just quick enough that it wasn't too bad so. okay you were able to grind. I mean, even at, at that gradient, you're still not doing a lot of RPMs, right? Yeah, it, it was weird because it felt like I was like spinning a lot just because it's so steep. Like you expect to be kind of grinding right. away really slowly. Um, okay. But when I was in my smallest gear, yeah, I'm not, I haven't really looked at my cadence and things. I think it was probably <laughs> like 60 or 70. I wouldn't want to look at it either. I'd be like, yeah, yeah here's the thing. My I knees got the might. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, and what did you do after to, to celebrate? Uh, we had to drive three hours home. <laughs> oh, and no. then uh, it was nice. Yeah, my my mom and my sister at home, they had made some nice pizza, okay. which was after, like, I was just eating just bars all day. So okay. it was, eating real food was pretty great. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Like, the, you want to indulge in a big meal, but also yeah. your stomach might not be in a position for it. Yeah, after, uh, the next day, day like wasn't that. great. <laughs> I bet your dad might have more pizza than you. Oh yeah, long day for him yeah. he he earns it probably more than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. So next time you do it, uh, you're gonna tell more than your dad, right? Well, and I then don't we know. Can, it's still but then we can risky. have people to volunteer to block the road for cars. Oh, we can have yeah. sheep watchers. You know, that's the most important. Like thing, I tortured yeah. all of my friends my last two attempts to block because there was like driveways and there was a twist oh, and there was yeah. all this stuff and like I had a a horrible crew of volunteers, well, a bunch of nice <laughs> people. I'm sure your friends would love to help you out uh and oh. and see a see you not hit a sheep uh but B, <laughs> see the record fall again so and then bbc i'll give you a day off and do a documentary about it oh yeah that'll be quite yeah, nice. I'll it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just have to do a full everything again yeah go there we fall. go <laughs> easy <laughs> <laughs> we'll take all the time you want uh thank you so much anything i missed that uh, uh that i don't think so yeah no? thanks for the opportunity to talk with you awesome no of course it's it's good to i didn't like with i, I was doing so many videos about the men's record and the women's record started to go and i was like i can't i can't tackle this too because at some point <laughs> everyone's gonna get sick of every single much else so you're the first woman i've had on there but oh. i think now that now that the records are sort of all really hard <laughs> it's not gonna <laughs> fall every week anymore so uh so we can we can keep doing that awesome. um What's a uh, what's your next race? Where can uh, where can people? Oh, um, it might be. There's a few left in like the national series we have, Curlew okay. Cup maybe. Okay. Um, no, like the hill climb series down there. Did you yeah, know? I think that's actually starting at the moment. So it's a bit weird now because it's at the same time as the road season, whereas gotcha. usually it's afterwards. But yeah, I definitely want to do yeah. a bunch of those. Like you national hill right climbs that. looks pretty good. Okay. I don't know. Some of them are like two minutes long. I don't know. <laughs> it's no, it's true. Long. I still think, I think you'd be okay. I think, uh, I think Maybe. it'll work out, but, well, uh, all right. <laughs> keep an eye out. I'll, uh, I'll put your Instagram in the links. Um, cool. cool. Thank you so much, Eileen. Thanks very much. All right. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.